Welcome back, station two, Kicker on MASH 2020. Just as we were leaving the last station, the power sports station, somebody asked the question about salt water. Yes, we can do salt water with those power bars, no problem at all. Speaking of salt water, now that we're dirty and muddy with Carlos, we're gonna jump in the pool with, with John Myers and he's gonna clean us off a little bit. We're gonna talk about marine amplifiers and speakers. John, what do we got in marine for 2021? Well, Aaron, we've got all kinds of stuff. So unless you guys have been living under a rock for the past four, 40 plus years. You already know Kicker makes some of the best value, the best sounding, the most durable car audio equipment on the planet. Well, if you didn't know, we also make some of the, the most you know, economical, affordable, and best performing marine products. Here in front of me, I've got two of our marine amplifier lines that we've redesigned for 2021. These amplifiers are killer. The KMA line is our entry level line, and the KXMA line is our step up line. Now, when I talk about the KMA line, when I say it's our entry level, I don't don't mean that this is an entry level product. This is just where we choose to start. So even though it's where we start with our marine amplifiers, it's a feature packed amplifier you just can't beat for the dollar. So all of our kicker amplifiers from 2010 feature something called FIT, fail safe integration technology. That means you can run speaker level or RCA level right into the RCA jack. In fact, they'll take 25 watts per channel speaker level right into the RCA input. That means you don't have to use a line out but converter. Line output converters rob you of sound and performance and quality, so why would you want to use one? Well, here at Kicker, we've designed our amplifiers so you don't need those. You don't need any extra products in the chain. So along with being able to run the speaker level right into this amplifier for a higher signal, you also get something called DC offset turn on. Embedded in the speaker signal, there's a DC voltage called DC offset was it, that's independent of the volume control. So in other words, the volume control can be completely in the minimum position, but you you still have the DC voltage to turn the amplifier on and off. That basically means you never have to run a switch turn on lead to the amplifier again. So both of these amplifier lines are marine compliant. They're designed to be used in a boat. You're going to hear a lot about this tonight. All of our products are specifically designed for the application that you're going to use them. That doesn't mean they don't work in other applications, but all their performance, all their design is made to maximize their usage where you're going to use them. So these amplifiers being marine compliant have two very important features features that make them different than the car audio amplifiers. First of all, the circuit boards are conformally coated. That's a sealant we put on the circuit board, so if water gets sprayed on the amplifiers or gets inside, it's not going to short it out and your listening experience. That's what they're designed for. Something else we do is the connections of these amplifiers are completely different than the car audio connections. In a typical car audio amplifier, you've got the little terminal blocks where the wire is inserted in the set screw, goes down and it tightens against the wire. In a marine compliant amplifier, that's not not possible. The marine certification process says that when that wire goes in and you tighten that set screw down, the set screw cannot directly contact the wire. So that's why there's a little metal tab inside these little chambers as the wire goes in to isolate it from the set screw to make sure that they're marine compliant. They're not going to cut through the, any of the, the uh, copper windings and cause a spark, which could be bad. It could cause an explosion in a boat. So let's go back over here to the KMA amplifier line and let's talk about some of the neat models that are available in this. We've got 150 watt two channels. So if you got a pair or two pair of coaxes, that's going to be a perfect amplifier for you. But once again, 150 watts, you know, we're kicker. We like power. We want more. We want more channels. We want more power. We also have a 360.4. It's going to be 65 watts per channel at 4 ohms and 90 watts per channel at 2 ohms. We've also introduced this year a 600 watt four channel. And we've got this awesome 800 watt mono stable or one ohm stable mono amplifier that's got a 24 dB per octave subsonic filter built in to protect your woofers in that infinite baffle location. Also, if you want more channels than that, we've got a 600.6. .6. That's going to be 600 watts of power, full range power into six separate channels. Two for the front of the boat, two for the middle of the boat, two for the back of the boat, or if you want, two for the front, two for the middle, and two for towers. Couple that with the KXMA 801 subwoofer amplifier. You've now got all your music covered in this line of amplifiers that we offer in the KMA series. When we jump up to the KXMA amplifier line, you're going to get some step-up features. 
First of all, these amplifiers are full range class D. That means they're much more efficient. They're going to use the power that's available in the battery much more efficiently. Therefore, you can listen to your music for a longer period of time without the boat running before you got to restart it or once again paddle back to shore because you only had one battery. So something else we offer is 24 dB per octave bandpass crossovers. Now bandpass crossover means I've got a high pass and a low pass crossover and I can adjust those independently to set the frequency exactly the way you want them in your speakers. Now me being an installer, I really like the KXMA series because we've got all the connections on the back and all the controls on the front of the amplifier. Makes it very simple to hook up, very clean. And if we flip this little door down, now you notice we have all the adjustments for the amplifier. We've got this little rubber seal on here to help keep some of the water out, but remember, they've got conformal coated circuit boards, so even if the water does get in, it's going to run right out without any problems. Something else unique about our amplifiers, and once again, we're all about making it easy for them to install and make sure they're set up properly. We've all heard of gain controls. Adjusting gain controls is a pain in the butt. You had to have oscilloscopes, you had to have RTAs, you had to have voltmeters, you know, test tones, and you know, all kinds of, you know, setup CDs. Well, what we've done is we've developed a circuitry built into these amplifiers that would allow you to set the gain properly without that. Now, most of you probably think a gain is a volume control. It's not a volume control. Both of these amplifiers, in fact, all kicker amplifiers, can reach their maximum output with the gain control in the minimum position. It just takes more voltage on the input to get them to do that. So to properly set the gain controls, you're going to want to go to kicker.com to the support tab. Download the test tones under that support tab, and you're going to play your sine waves, either a wave or an MP3 file. We well, always suggest you use the wave file if your unit will play that. The MP3 is going to be compressed, and it'll work. It's just not quite as good, but sometimes that's your only option. So when you play the test tone files on these amplifiers, you're going to set that source unit at three quarters volume. So then while it's playing three quarters volume with all the tone control set in the flat position, you'll begin turning the gain control up. And as you start turning this up slowly, eventually that gain control is going to light up red. Well, we all know what red means. Red means stop, right? So that means don't turn it up any farther. In fact, back it off just a little bit till the light goes out. Now you know the gain control is set perfectly for this amplifier to match to your source unit. This happens to be the 900.5. It's a five channel amplifier. We have three separate gain controls for the three separate areas. You've got an amp one gain, an amp two gain, and you have a subwoofer gain. And since this amplifier has a built in subwoofer amplifier, it also features, as we talked about with the bandpass crossover capabilities, a bandpass crossover on the subwoofer. But people are asking, why would I want a bandpass on a subwoofer? I just want a low pass crossover, right? Well, once again, in a boat, a lot of times you're using your speakers in an infinite baffle situation and you need to limit some of those low frequencies from damaging the driver. This amplifier has a variable 24 dB per octave subsonic filter from 10 all the way up to 80 hertz, so now you can really dial in the bass exactly the way you want it. And this amplifier also features this nice little wired subwoofer level control, so now we can control the output of the subwoofer independently from the rest of the system. So in the KXMA amplifier line, we've got a 400 watt two channel, a 400 watt four channel, an 800 watt eight channel, and a 1200 watt two channel. New for this year, we've added a four channel amplifier that'll do 800 watts of power. Once again, that's 200 watts by four at four ohms, at two ohms. So it's gonna be an awesome amplifier. Now, if you wanna connect these to speakers, what are you gonna use? Probably some of the speakers I have behind me. We actually have a huge selection of marine products. So we offer amplifiers, which you just saw, media source unit, installation components, and of course, a wide range of speakers. We have coax speakers available in four inch, six and a half inch, and eight inch. They come with both the gray and the white grills. The six and a half and eight inch have the capabilities of being used with RGB LED. So you can see the way these speakers light up and they give you some really cool colors. To control those RGB LEDs, we got this KMLC. That'll give you 19 different zones and 20 different colors. And in fact, if you want more light than you have just on the front of the speakers, we also offer these awesome LED speaker rings. These rings are available in a six and a half, eight inch, 10 inch, and 12 inch variety. So you can also buy separate four, six, and eight inch cans, 
and you can buy the speakers preloaded in the cans like you see here. In fact, the six and a half are even available in a dual can, and the dual cans are also available separately. Here again, all available in both white and black. Now, you want a really high efficiency driver to put up on your wake tower? That's why we have the KMTCs. These use a compression driver in the 9 inch and 11 inch varieties that give you a whole lot of output with a minimal amount of power. They play really loud, but they sound great. So the 9 inch and 11 inch are 4 ohms in impedance and they handle 300 watts of power continuously. These awesome clamps that we have on all these speakers that you see will clamp on a bar from 1 and a half to 3 and a quarter inches in diameter. The KMT PCs actually have an ability to rotate 359 degrees by undoing this little locking tab on the side. Or if you want to remove them, you can literally take off these two screws right here and then the whole speaker unplugs and then you don't have to worry about any connections. Now, if you don't have a round bar, you've got more of a factory style mount, we offer the KMFC. This speaker has this nice little cast stainless steel hockey puck and if you were here the other day, you saw me throw it at the camera guy's feet. He jumped pretty good. But this little stainless steel puck will actually mount to your bar or mount to any flat surface. Then you insert the speaker into the little hockey puck or the mounting rank and then tighten the screws down. This is also available in a 9 inch and 11 inch both black and white, forums of impedance, and 300 watts of power handling. These are gonna be awesome sounding speakers. Aaron, do we got any questions for our marine? My product? iPad is blowing up. Good. <laughs> Lots of good I saw questions. Smoke coming out of it. Yes. Uh, uh, our friends at DJ Offroad, they're building a lot of Jeeps with the top down. Awesome. And they're asking, uh, would the marine amplifiers be a better choice for their installs? Well, for Jeeps, like I say, you got a couple options. In fact, I'm gonna answer that question most definitely yes, because you never know when you're your Jeep's going to be caught in the rain or it's going to be out in the mud. So these amplifiers are going to be great for that. But you know, the other question is, can you use them in just basic car audio? And the answer is yes. In fact, that eight channel marine amplifier, the 808, we see a lot of people using them with multi-channel systems in some of these newer vehicles, where they got dash speakers, they got mid ranges in the doors, woofers in the doors, center channel. So any of these amplifiers are fully capable of being used in the automotive world, but they're also really going to excel in the marine environment. Are the terminal blocks angled? Yes, the terminal blocks in these amplifiers, if you notice, are angled down about 15 degrees. That makes it a little easier if you're mounting it into a, an amplifier rack so you don't have to try to bend that wire quite as much, especially when you're talking some of the bigger amplifiers like the 1200.2 that has one out wire capability, and that's the diameter of my thumb. What's the warranty on the amplifiers? All the amplifiers are gonna come with a three-year warranty. Three-year, yep. okay. For Marine, that's pretty good. Very good. Uh, will they run on 16-volt systems? Um, here again, our amplifiers are designed to run probably no higher than 15 volts. So the amplifiers will run as low as nine and a half, but once again, they're gonna shut off at 15 and a half volts, and that's due to the problem that with a lot of these amplifiers, we start running too much voltage, the capacitors and everything inside aren't designed to take that higher voltage, because most of the time your car audio product is never going to see generally over 14 and a half to 15 at the tops. Final question, uh, William Lindsay is asking, uh, remote gain knob, is it Bluetooth? No, this remote gain knob on the KM900.1, KXMA900.1 is wired and it uses just your standard phone cable that plugs into the back of the remote and the amplifier. Thank you, John. Wealth of knowledge as always.